the next important topic that we have to discuss in the name spaces is networks this is a fairly complex topic and we would probably need a little more detailed discussion through a practical exercise but to start with let's understand how the docker ecosystem actually works now if you look at the look at the typical docker architecture what you will find is you know on a host machine you will find a set of in ethernet interfaces right so you might have eth0 there's a loopback hello this this wlan0 and there might be eth1 if there's a different nic card altogether and if there, there might be eth2 if there's a third nic card on that particular machine so you know you will find so many network interfaces but for a container to actually work it needs to establish a connection with either eth0 or something like wlan if, if you're on wi-fi purely on wi-fi so what docker actually does is it creates something called a docker bridge within the kernel and that acts as the broker for the containers to interact with the network interface through which it communicates with the external world now to show what we are actually talking about what we have, you have you will see is in this diagram is within the container name, namespace we have a virtual ethernet connection we eth1 we eth1 in both the cases both in the case of container namespace 1 and container namespace 2 but both of them are connected to the docker bridge through VETH0. So any any data that comes to VT, VETH0 can seamlessly go to VETH1 or on the namespace 1 or it can go to the VETH1 on the namespace 2. This is probably not the way in which it's actually done. You might have uh, separate virtual ethernet adapter associated with the docker bridge for the independent containers so that that is a better way of doing it but this is just to represent you know how the communication between the the docker virtual ethernet and the container virtual ethernet happens and how it seamlessly flows from the docker virtual ethernet to the actual ethernet interface now, to establish all these things, we need to have a, a have a view of the source code. So let's get into the practical exercise on this. Thank you for listening.